Hi everyone, my name is Whitney and I'm a registered dental hygienist and today we're answering one of the most common questions I get in the comments, in my messages, emails, even in the dental chair with my patients. Do I ever recommend fluoride-free toothpaste? Let's talk. So my answer isn't a simple yes or no, but I'll try to explain my answer as quickly as I can. So I want to start by saying no, I don't routinely recommend fluoride-free toothpaste, and this is because fluoride is still the gold standard when it comes to cavity prevention. It's safe when used as directed, highly effective, and supported by decades of research. I'll link my fluoride safety videos below if you want to learn more. They go deep into the science and they help explain why there's so much misinformation surrounding the topic of fluoride. So yes, I'm pro-fluoride toothpaste, however, if a patient of mine refuses fluoride for any reason, I don't shame them and walk away. I of course try to meet them where they're at. I try to offer an evidence-based perspective and give guidance on what they can do to stay healthy. So the question becomes, if someone refuses fluoride, can a fluoride-free toothpaste still work? Let's break it down. Most fluoride-free toothpastes use ingredients that do not remineralize tooth enamel. So they may freshen breath or clean the surface of your teeth, but they don't strengthen enamel or prevent cavities. So that's why I do not recommend fluoride-free. However, there's one exception, nanohydroxy appetite toothpaste. That's the only fluoride free ingredient I've seen with enough solid science evidence behind it regarding remineralization, which again is the most important reason we use toothpaste is to strengthen and protect enamel to aid in the prevention of cavities. Fluoride does this very well, as we know. And theoretically, nanohydroxyapatite can do this well as well when formulated properly. But that's where it gets tricky because nanohydroxyapatite toothpaste needs to be formulated according to the current data with 10% true nano size particles, not micro size and not 2%, not 3%, but 10%. With at least 10% sized particles, it can help remineralize enamel and prevent cavities. Still not as well as fluoride because it's not as stable in acidic environments, but it's close. So yes, for patients who absolutely refuse fluoride toothpaste, I cautiously recommend fluoride-free toothpaste only if it contains 10% nanohydroxyapatite. But here's the thing, and it's a big thing, the regulation problem with non-fluoride products. Fluoride toothpaste is medically regulated in the US, meaning third-party authority verify the claims that the fluoride brands make regarding their ingredients, so what's on the label is verified. Whereas nanohydroxyapatite toothpaste in the US, it's not medically regulated. That means the brand can say it has 10% nanohydroxyapatite, but we don't actually know if it does. They might use cheaper micro-sized particles instead of nano, which don't work the same. And or they might use different shapes of particles, like cones or spheres instead of rods. And again, there's no third-party system in place right now to catch any of that. So when someone uses fluoride-free toothpaste with nanohydroxyapatite, they may be getting a great product, or they might be using something that doesn't work at all. That uncertainty makes me hesitant to recommend it. I can't guarantee it's going to help my patients, right? And before you ask me in the comments, well, which companies have the 10% Whitney? Which ones have worked for your patients? That's the problem. It doesn't work like that. I will link a video of mine that goes over the importance of evidence-based versus anecdotal-based if you want to learn more about why word of mouth is not something to rely on in healthcare. I go deep into explaining evidence versus anecdotal concepts. It's actually in my oil pulling video, which again, I'll link below, but back to the regulation processes. Just remember that non-fluoride products can say they have all the required concentrations and types of ingredients, but you're just trusting their word. The company who wants to sell their product and might be paying for fake reviews, you are trusting their word and their reviews. There's no third-party medical regulation process for non-fluoride dental products in the U.S. as of current. And before I go, we gotta talk about cost. These fluoride-free toothpastes are expensive, like $20 to $30 per tube expensive, at least for the ones that claim they have the 10%. So the cheaper ones definitely don't have 10% because it is actually very expensive to make nanohydroxyapatite toothpaste properly. And sadly, some companies play off of fear to get people to spend more money, convincing them that fluoride is harmful when the evidence says otherwise. That's not okay. When someone can't afford nanohydroxyapatite toothpaste and has been scared away from fluoride, that makes me upset. That's misinformation, hurting people's health and wallets. So to recap, what do I tell my patients? If they are open to fluoride, great, we go with a fluoride toothpaste. It's proven, effective, and regulated for safety. If they're anti-fluoride, no matter what the evidence shows, I will of course still explain the science and safety of fluoride and misinformation surrounding fluoride, but if they still aren't interested, then I'll go over the pros and cons of nanohydroxyapatite, especially the lack of regulation, and help them choose the best possible option in that category. But I always make it clear that I cannot guarantee fluoride-free will be as effective as fluoride. So if you're someone looking to switch to non-fluoride toothpaste, I highly recommend you discuss your carries risk 
risk, meaning how prone you are to getting cavities with your personal dentist and or dental hygienist. If you don't get lots of cavities, it might be okay to gamble and not use fluoride. But if you get lots of cavities, removing fluoride from your routine will only lead to more cavities. And listen, I've had patients who don't get cavities. So they switched to non-fluoride thinking they were being more natural and they didn't talk with me beforehand about it and they came back with cavities. Although anecdotal, I think it's important to share this with you. Even if you think you aren't cavity prone, maybe it's like that because you are using a fluoride toothpaste daily. Always, always, always talk with your individual dentist and or individual dental hygienist before making any changes with products you use at home. They will be able to guide you with the best evidence available based on your individual mouth. And thank you for watching this video. I will link all my fluoride safety videos and my nano hydroxyapatite videos in the description below, plus my free oral care guide, because honestly, brushing the right way is just as, if not more important, as what the ingredients are in your toothpaste. So many people brush and floss wrong. They use improper technique, like the seesaw method when flossing or using an electric toothbrush like a manual toothbrush. No, no, no. Always first make sure you are brushing correctly and then you can decide on the best toothpaste to put on your brush. I hope this video helped you. If so, please like, subscribe, and share it with someone you think might be confused about this topic. And until next time, I'll see you on Instagram at Teeth Talk Girl. Peace, love, and teeth.